Hey guys, hello everyone. Welcome to the Sign Academy, all of you. So today we are going to start the practice of the Hamet equation. We have uh, I've taken five questions over here. All of these five questions have been asked in the CSI NET and GATE examination. These are all previous year questions. So before watching this uh, video, please uh, visit the previous video on the concept of Hamet equation. It's a very small topic, and in these two videos, you will be able to solve these questions, right? Chalo. So let's uh, start solving this question. First one. True statement regarding Hamet reaction constant rho for the following transformation given in equation A and B is. So this is equation A and this is equation B. What do you see over here? You see that there is an ester, and we are doing the ester hydrolysis like this. Okay? Yes. And the ester hydrolysis is going to go through a tetrahedral intermediate, and finally you end up with the alcohol ethanol and the carboxylate salt. Okay, very well. Now, in the equation number B, what do you see? The same thing is happening. The ester hydrolysis is taking place, but over here, the benzene nucleus is far away, a little bit far away from the ester, right? So, what is the difference? What is the difference generated in these two guys? In the previous video, we have already discussed the same reaction. That is, when your reaction site moves away from the benzene nucleus, what happens is your uh, Rho value is going to decrease. Okay, so let's say that the rho value of this one is rho one, for example, and this is rho two. What are you going to have? So because of the increase in the distance, rho two is going to be less than rho one. Yes, and the rho value is going to be positive for both of these. Why is it positive, guys? For both of these, because when you are doing the ester hydrolysis, you will see. You will see that it usually undergoes this kind of a mechanism, which has the tetrahedral intermediate. Now, this tetrahedral intermediate, when the bond is going to fall back, the ethoxy is going to leave like this, right? And uh, it gives you the product. But the question is, how is the intermediate? Is the intermediate electron rich or electron deficient? This is absolutely electron rich, right? This is absolutely electron rich, and that is why. We are saying both of the positive, both of the values are positive. Now, question is why the value of first one is higher positive than the second one, right? First of all, we take the correct answer. That is, the rho value for A is larger positive value than B. This is correct. But why is that so? Let's also consider the reason behind it. One, why is that so? Why is the first one? Higher positive than the second one. Okay, it's very very simple. That is, guys, if you consider, if you consider C double bond O O E T, this molecule, and we had already understood this that what is the, uh, you know, what is the role of X? If the X is methoxy, that is electron donating group, the sigma value or the substitution constant, this is going to be negative, and if the S X equals to nitro, which is the electron withdrawing. The sigma value is going to be positive. Okay, so if we just try to put the same X over here and sigma into rho is equals to change in rate. All right, if we just look at the significance, then what happens is if you are taking X to be methoxy, yes, guys, if you are taking the X to be methoxy, what happens is Rho is positive for the overall reaction because it involves a tetrahedral intermediate and uh, electron-rich transition state. So the change in rate depends on the sigma value. Sigma is negative for this, yes. So the change in rate is also negative, right? When we are taking methoxy, and that is so, electron donating groups are going to cause this carbon to become less electron deficient. If you are having a methoxy over here, what will happen? Methoxy is going to give the electron density to this carbon, and the carbon becomes less electron deficient, yeah, electrophilic, so that it does not invite the OH minus. All right, so this is the scenario. You understand that all right, methoxy is going to slow down the rate of reaction. Nitro, on the other hand, will increase the rate of reaction. All right, why do you understand that? Why does the effect happen? The effect happens because the Ester group is directly connected to benzene, and resonance can take place. That is why these groups are going to be so influential on this molecule. That is why the rho value is also high. But if you are increasing, if you are adding two carbons in between, 
there is very less effect of this x only the minus effect minus i or plus i effect is going to work there is no resonance taking place till this center okay so that is why whenever you are increasing the uh, reaction site increasing the distance between the reaction site and the influencing group the rho value is going to decrease so a is a larger positive value than for b okay answer is option number 1 this is a very recent csi net question moving onwards to question number 2 the correct order of hamet reaction constant rho for the deprotonation of the following carboxylic acid is all right guys once again we had done the same concept and i'm asking you the same thing once again once again previous year question guys so you see that for benzoic acid yes for benzoic acid hamet had considered the standard value to be equals to 1 the reaction constant was considered to be plus 1.0 for simple benzoic acid obviously it's not a benzoic acid there is some substituent over here but uh, we can roughly take it as one all right we can just roughly take it as a standard if we take this as a standard guys once again you are increasing the distance when you go on increasing the distance what should happen the rho value should decrease yes so a must have the maximum rho value then b then c all right so guys i think that by now you have understood how we are able to use the values of rho and sigma to say that what is the type of reaction mechanism and what is the influence of different group on the reaction rate okay so both these things to hamet equation so guys the answer should be a greater than b greater than c over here isn't it yes chalo Let's try to do this question by yourself. Question number three, guys. So the exact same question. This is a gate chemistry uh, question from the chemistry paper, and the same thing, the same graph is already there in the Claydon. Which chapter? Chapter number thirty-nine. Determining reaction mechanism. Okay, if you want to read further, you can just open this chapter and study. chapter number 39 from the second edition determining reaction mechanism okay so shown below is a hamet plot obtained for this reaction what is the reaction your acyl chloride is just getting hydrolyzed to carboxylic acid yes plus hcl now when you are getting two curves like this yeah what did i tell you guys yes this is your log of the uh, rate constant versus sigma if your value if the rho value goes like this then it is negative which means the transition state is electron deficient if it goes like this then it is positive which means the transition state is electron rich in nature right so usually you have only one type of graph for one mechanism but here yes here what happens is you are having two graphs two curves in the same graph guys of the rho which means that the rho value is changing why does the rho value change let's see the reaction does not follow linear free energy relationship so there is no use of free energy relationship over here not that complex electrons are being withdrawn from the transition state in the mechanism that is it is electron deficient yes it is electron deficient who rho minus value this is electron deficient in the transition state absolutely but what about this this is not electron deficient this is electron rich electrons are being donated to the transition state so looks like both of these are correct isn't it but they have to happen in the same graph not as uh, individual options so we are going to click the fourth one mechanism of the reaction is changing isn't it because at once it behaves like having a electron deficient transition state how can that happen that can happen when the oxygen is going to push away the chlorine and it's going to give the acyl cation like this and then the h2o is going to attack since this is electron deficient in nature the rho value is minus 4.4 for this reaction all right yes okay it gives you this molecule finally now what about the electron rich one how does that happen so electron rich we uh, which means you are just going to get the tetrahedral intermediate right that the water is going to attack directly electron rich transition state aromatic group o minus oh cl all right something like this 
So this is a electron rich tetrahedral intermediate which we have obtained and that is why the rho value is plus 2.5 for this. So for the same reaction the mechanism is changing and that is why you are having a different rho value. Answer is option number D. Let's look at next question from gate. This is of 2006. Match the reaction of some uh, para substituted benzene derivatives. Okay, A and D given in the list 1 with the Hamet rho values from 1 to 4 in the list 2. Alright, what is the correct match? Alright, so guys, you just have to identify what is the type of reaction and then you have to match. You can take your time, pause the video, do it by yourself guys. Very, very important you identify now. Okay, chalo. I hope that you have tried. Let's answer then. First thing, look at this question. Now this aromatic group is some uh, para substitution that we are not going to worry about. Whatever it is guys, you don't have to see the uh, electron withdrawing and electron donating nature for each and every reaction. No, that doesn't happen in this way. When you are only talking about rho, which means you are only going to consider the type of mechanism. By now you must have realized this. Yes. So wherever this, uh, whatever this aromatic group is, we are just having some benzene, uh, some para substitution on benzene, but the benzene is there. So in the presence of acetone, aqueous acetone, the molecule, molecule is basically going to give you benzyl carbocation. Benzyl carbocation and when you get a benzyl carbocation, this is absolutely uh, going to be a solvolysis reaction. Solvolysis is having electron poor, your yeah, electron deficient transition state. What should be the rho value? The rho value should be negative. Do we have any negative value? Absolutely, we do. Fourth one, negative value. So A matches with four. Yes, you can just check it out guys. A and C are both wrong. They're not matching with 4. Yeh ho sakte hai, B and D. But let's move onwards and let's see further examples. Right? Chalo. Let's look at this. So do we have benzoic acid? No, we have benzyl carboxylic acid. Here we can say we have benzoic acid. Isn't it? So benzoic acid and do we have one? Absolutely. So benzoic acid is always the one because this is uh, taken as standard, isn't it? By definition. Yes. So we match D with 2. So D is matched with 2 in option number 4. This is correct. Here D is matching with 3. So this is wrong. But guys, you have to confirm more. Just before, uh, just, uh, you know, resting the case. All right. Now, what happens is, if you compare this with 1, this is 1 standard, and just compare B and D. Why? Because there is 1 CH2 in between the two groups, so the value must be positive, but less positive. Okay, so this is the less positive value that you have. 0 0.49, isn't it? Yes, when you have added one more carbon in between, this is the less positive value for B. B is going to match with C, correct? What about option number C, guys? Aryl chloride. Let's say I am having this kind of a uh, aryl chloride molecule, okay, in the presence of methoxy anion. This is either going through benzyne mechanism, all right, uh, or it is going through SNAR mechanism, right? But what are you getting? You are getting aryl methoxy group. So either SNAR mechanism or benzyne mechanism, both ways, guys, you are having electron rich transition state, isn't it? In both the possibilities, benzyne ho, ya fir SNAR, your transition state is electron rich, you must have a rho value which is high positive. High positive value, you only have one that is 8.50. So, C matches with one. Absolutely, D is the correct answer. Alright, so I just hope that this uh, seems like a puzzle now, not very difficult. Okay, last question guys, question number five in this video. Correct combination of the following reaction and their rho values is. So, we have A, B, C. We have three different reactions over here. We have P, Q, R and S. So, Q value is minus 0 0.99 and this is, these are all the P, Q, R, S value. Okay? All of these. Now, what happens is guys, you have to consider all of these reactions one by one. You are having... Aromatic amine, okay, no problem. 
but the aromatic amine is to attack over the PHCOCl and it can attack by two ways. What it can directly, the, let's say the amine is directly attacking to give you an electron rich uh, tetrahedral intermediate that will give you a row value positive. Or it can also do one more thing that it can generate a acyl cation first of all. That gives you a row values equals to negative. Okay, row values, uh, sorry, not uh, sigma, it is row. Row value is negative. Okay, so which one is happening that we need to find out based on the value. Okay, so let's keep it on hold. Both are possible. What about this? A, R, O minus. Let's say some phenolate. Attacking on ethyl iodide in ethanol. This is simple SN2 reaction. Like this. It is a simple SN2 reaction. Obviously, it's not going to be written like this. But yes, yeah, simple SN2 reaction. SN2 reaction has electron deficient, small delta positive on the carbon. But it is only a small uh, positive charge. So you cannot say you are having a very high negative value. Which one is the high negative value? Minus 2.69 is the high negative value. Okay. Yes, you cannot say that this is applicable to this small positive charge. So small negative value can we say? Absolutely. This is going to be a small negative value. Small negative value. Okay. So small negative value is Q. Okay, minus 0.99. What about over here, option number C? Aromatic ester, aqueous NaOH in ETOH. Absolutely, when you are having a base, when you are having an ester, this is ester hydrolysis. Ester hydrolysis always going to go through tetrahedral intermediate, isn't it? In the basic medium, it is always going to go through a tetrahedral intermediate. Yes, which is always electron rich. So you're going to have a uh, row value which is positive. Yes, you're going to have a row value which is positive. How much positive? High positive. So matches with P plus 2.01. This is the row value for option number C. So B and C we have found out. What about option number A, guys? Yes, these two are booked already. In option number A, we have two things. Either the value could be large negative all right, or it could be small positive. Now consider the reaction over here. There are two possible mechanisms. First is, if you are considering the direct attack like this, then it is going to give you electron rich transition state just like the ester hydrolysis and it will be a large positive value that is approximately two point something, right? But large positive though does not remain over here. This is used up, this is used up. Only two values are remaining, large positive and a small positive and small positive is not there. Right? We are not going to use this small positive. Or, dusra mechanism kya hai guys? Another mechanism is when the aromatic amine is attacking on the acyl cation. Right? So, this is going to be a large negative and you have a large negative. Okay? So that is why the value is going to match with R. A value matches with R. Okay, because you have a large negative and that is why A matches with R. B is going to match with Q as you have already seen. Small negative and C is going to match with P which is the large positive. Absolutely correct. Okay, so just try to compare. And when you read the whole chapter in detail, this Hammett equation part from chapter number 39 of Clayden. Okay, this one right over here. You will be able to understand more uh, by seeing more examples. All right. So, yes, everyone. I just hope that these five questions have uh, helped you in understanding this concept better. If it has, then please uh, write in the comment section. All right, guys. And also, please give uh, more suggestions on what topic do you want to complete right now before your examination. And definitely, I'll try to help all of you. So if you already haven't subscribed, please do. And also like and share and also click the bell for the notifications. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon in another video. Bye, everyone.